everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Alex and today I'm bringing you my mid-November wrap-up. So a couple different things before we get started. If you just want to jump into the wrap-up, then go to this timestamp. But first of all, you guys are obviously at a new angle. The place in our house where I usually film is actually kind of right behind where you're sitting right now, but it is currently where our Christmas tree is sitting. So I had to kind of readjust and try to make it work. So let me know how you feel about this angle. I might be playing around with it even more in the coming weeks. Next, you guys may have realized that I missed an upload on Tuesday. I usually post my videos on Tuesdays and Saturdays, but last Tuesday one did not get posted. It has just been a really crazy, hectic time around here. We started potty training and then pretty much right after we started potty training, he got sick and I've had a lot of work that I've been doing and it's just been really hectic. So a video didn't get out on Tuesday, but I wanted to get this one up for you guys. But as far as my wrap up, I've actually managed to finish eight books already in the month of November, which I am really proud of. I did not think I would have finished that many books so far, but I have, and I've got a lot more on my plate for the rest of the month, but I've also got a whole lot of work to do. So who knows how the end of the month's really gonna turn out. Before we get started, if you are new here and you're not already, be sure to go down below and hit the subscribe button as well as the bell icon so that you never miss out on any of my content. And without further ado, let's get started. So the first book that I finished in the month of November was A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. Now, I don't want to say too, too much about the synopsis, mainly because I feel like a bunch of people have already read and loved this book by now, but this is essentially a Beauty and the Beast retelling featuring a girl named Harper and a prince named Wren. Now, I had been hearing a ton of hype about this novel, and I will be the first to say that it is completely well-deserved. This is one of the best fairy tale retellings that I have read in a really, really, really long time. Like, I would put this on the same level as the Lunar Chronicles, and the Lunar Chronicles is one of my favorite series of all time. I really loved the way that the retelling asked were done in this novel. It's like you knew what was coming and you kind of could predict what was going to happen based on the original fairy tale, but it was still completely its own thing. The characters were really dynamic and you got attached to them. The action scenes were so cool and just the whole book in general was really atmospheric and just brought you into the world. I absolutely devoured this. It's about 500 pages long and I finished it in a weekend. It was phenomenal and the sequel comes out in January, so I am so excited to get on it and I'm glad that we don't have to wait that long. Also, if you have read this book, let's talk about the ending because it was insane. So this one was an easy five out of five for me. The next one I finished was actually a nonfiction title called How to Talk So Kids Will Listen and Listen So Kids Will Talk. Now, this is pretty much exactly what the title says. It is telling parents more effective ways to open up communication with their kids instead of getting one, two word answers or not getting anywhere fighting all the time. It reframes how you think about communicating with your kids so that that line of communication is more open and more effective. Now I will say my son is only two and a half and some of the concepts in this book are not ready for us yet. We're not at the point where he can have the advanced conversation that the book is talking about. But some of the tips and tricks in this book really did help me reframe some of the things that I say to my son and the way that I talk to him. And I have found it really effective already in our relationship, but I think that it will continue to be so as he gets older. But I will also say one of the big downsides of this is that I feel like a lot of the examples and the dialogues that are in this book are not realistic and they are really cheesy. I could never see a real parent or child talking to each other in this way, whether it's before the tip or after the tip. Some of the dialogue, it just was not convincing to me, but I could see how the concepts would apply to real conversations that I might have with my child. But either way, I found it informative. It was just kind of a quick read that I picked up because it was there. But if you're a parent and you're looking for something like that, I would recommend it. I wound up giving it a four out of five stars. The next book I completed was Tweet Cute by Emma Lord. This is an e-arc that I received through NetGalley and it is set to release in January of 2020. Now this is kind of a hate to love romance about two high schoolers, Pepper and Jack, and their families both own opposing restaurants in New York City. And one day Pepper's family's restaurant is accused of stealing a recipe from Jack's family's restaurant. And they actually wind up getting into this viral Twitter war over it. I felt like this was just a really cute, fun, fluffy romance that did a really good job of talking about how social media plays a real impact in today's society. I also really appreciated that the main characters, of course, were involved in the main plot line of the story, but they also were worried about just random things that high school seniors genuinely worry about. So it felt really well-rounded to me in that way. And just overall, I just thought that this one was really well done. I think that this is a debut by this author, and if it is, I'm really impressed. Overall, I gave this one a four out of five stars. Next, I finally completed On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. 
Now, this novel follows 16 year old Brie and her father was this underground rap star that was murdered before his time and Brie is now seeing it as her opportunity to carry on his legacy and step into the spotlight also to help provide for her family because they have found themselves kind of run down on their luck they're behind on the rent and it's really hard to make ends meet and Brie is taking it upon herself to make it in the rap world so that she can salvage her family. One thing that I really love about Angie Thomas's work is that she strikes the perfect balance between the serious topics that she's trying to cover and just normal teenage life. So we do get to see Brie going through her family's gas getting cut off and they don't have electric and they have to borrow money and they have to go to the swap meet and go to a food bank to get food. We see her dealing with these really hard issues, but we also just see her having a crush on a boy and fighting with her friends and just stuff that every teenager goes through. And Angie Thomas really balances those really well and just strikes a chord with you. It was really really easy for me to root for Brie all throughout this novel. I absolutely loved her character and everything about this novel. I will say also that I listened to this on audiobook and it's the same narrator that did The Hate You Give and she is incredible. So if you haven't picked up this book yet somehow, I feel like I'm the last one, but if you haven't picked it up yet definitely do so on audio. I really enjoyed doing it that way. I will say I didn't quite love this one as much as The Hate You Give, but I definitely definitely still would recommend it nonetheless. I end up giving this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Next I read The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetys. I'm not going to go too into the plot of this one, but essentially it follows a large cast of characters living in 1957 in Madrid, Spain, and you get to see the aftermath and the effects after the Spanish Civil War. Ruta Sepetys has always written historical fiction, and she does a beautiful job of highlighting these historical events that aren't talked about as much and aren't taught as much in schools. I knew very, very, very little about the Spanish Civil War going into this novel, and she just paints such a wonderful picture, and she doesn't try to dull anything down or save you from the trauma that these people went through, but she does make it atmospheric and really put you in their shoes. I will say it took me a little while to get into this novel because there are a lot of characters, so it took me a while for all of them to get introduced and then for us to see how they were all going to connect, but once I actually got into it and the storyline really started to unfold, I was really captivated. I also have to say that there is a romance in this novel and it was adorable. I felt like it was done really well. It didn't take away from the harshness of what she was trying to talk about in the story, but in general it was a really nice balance. So this is a relatively new release, so if you like historical fiction and you haven't picked it up yet, I would recommend it and I wound up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars. Next I completed All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Bryn Greenwood. It seems like there's a lot of secrecy in this video, but again, I don't want to go into a whole lot of the plot of this, so all I'm going to say is that we follow the budding relationship between our two characters, Wavy and Kellen. I'm sure the angle just changed. I have no idea how much. I had to go get my little sickling. <laughs> Now I will say that this is a really controversial novel. If you've read it, then you'll know what I'm talking about, but I don't want to just say what it's about publicly in case you are interested and want to go in blind. But if you want to know a little bit more, feel free to contact me and I will tell you some more information about it. But essentially this novel makes you root for characters that you didn't think you were going to root for and makes you ship relationships that you probably shouldn't ship and it just in general really makes you think about what's right and wrong. It does a really nice job of blurring the line. This one was really thought-provoking and emotional and I've heard a ton of great things about it again and it's just one that you have to read it and experience it to really understand why so many people love it. So overall I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. All right, we've only got two more to get through so I'm going to try to make this fast but the next one that I finished was An American Marriage by Tayari Jones. This novel starts out following our two main characters, Celestial and Roy, and they are newlyweds and they've been married for about a year when Roy goes to prison for a crime that he did not commit. So we get to examine how this prison sentence impacts their lives both separately and towards each other and just see how things unfold. Now this is definitely a beloved book by a lot of people, but I did enjoy it and I appreciated what it was trying to say and I liked the narrative and I think the place that this book really shines is in the writing style. Tyree Jones is a very very talented writer and I definitely love the writing style. It was really atmospheric, it was flowery without being overly so, and that is something that I'll really commend the novel on. Now the flip side of that was as interesting as this book was, I don't feel like I ever got attached to any of the characters characters enough to really care about what they were going through. So by the, towards the end of the novel, I really didn't agree with some of the decisions that were made and it just kind of put a bad taste in my mouth at the end. 
I think that I am in the minority here. I think most people absolutely adore this novel. So feel free, please give it a try if it sounds like something that you're going to be interested in. But maybe just level your expectations a little bit. I wound up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. And the last book that I've completed so far in November was Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha and Young. And this is the second book in the Girls of Paper and Fire trilogy. Now since this is the second book in a series, I can't go too much into the plot, but just know that it follows the events that ended in Girls of Paper and Fire. Now I will say I enjoyed this book more than I enjoyed Girls of Paper and Fire, but I do think that it took me a long time to get into this novel. I started it on an audiobook and then read a few chapters in the ebook version, so a, a printed copy, and then I got back into it on audio. So it took me a while to kind of get myself back into the world and really connect with the plot, but once I did, it was good from there. I still have some major issues with the main character in the series. Mainly, I just think that a lot of what she does and how she acts is kind of childish. I don't agree with a lot of the decisions that she makes, but that is like my main quip with her. But the rest of the characters I did enjoy, and I really liked the action in this novel. And I don't think that it really fell into that second book slump. Maybe it did a little bit, but I still enjoyed myself. We also in this novel get a lot of commentary on the effects and the aftermath of going through sexual trauma, which can be triggering. So of course know that going in, but if you are okay reading that, I feel like it was done really well. And I really appreciated the care that the author took approaching that subject. This novel did end on a little bit of a plot twist, but not as much as I thought it was gonna be. I mean, it still is a plot twist, but I guess again, I'm not attached enough to these characters to feel that shocked by what happened at the end of the novel, but regardless, I will be finishing the trilogy when it comes out, probably the end of next year or the year after. I wound up giving this one a four out of five stars. So that is it for my mid-November wrap-up. If you have read any of these books, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and let me know of your favorite book that you've read so far in November. As always, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, as well as going down and hitting the subscribe button and the bell icon down below so that you never miss out on any of my content. So until next time, bye!